if we are honest with ourselves, our strategy of change is often based and fueled by hope. Oh, I hope I get a promotion. I hope my kids start to love God. I hope I make more money. I hope this can improve. We are always hoping and praying. But hope is not a strategy. We need to replace fruitless hope for some diligent work and habits that I can move on to the next level. That's why people go to church. I saw one the other day, and I, his both hands were full of phones and was invoking the name of Jesus Christ. You have said, whatever I command is going to be commanded. Whatever I, whatever I establish, I mean, and he was commanding a lot into the phones in his hand. And the people are shouting a loud amen. I feel sorry for them. Because you get, could get your phone back, you probably may have lost some data as well. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. It's one thing to hope. You only hope when you have done your diligent work. Power may plant, abono may water, God brings increase. When you have planted and you have water, now you are hoping for an increase. And God is ever faithful to his word. He said, the word, the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. But the soul of a lazy man desires and hopes and prays and yet has nothing. If just only people can realize, when you pray, you also work. When you work, you also pray. If Paul does not plant, Apollo does not water, there's nothing for God to increase. You got to take the same year you have to take, and I'm telling you, work is not easy. That's why it's called work. When I go to work, I feel like, oh man, I don't want to do it. Because even when you are sleeping, you don't feel completely asleep as when you are not working. There's something about psychology that tells you that you are at work. That's why when the day of uh, weekend or TGIF, thank God it's Friday. We are all happy Friday's coming. We are all happy it's a three day weekend. Oh, when, when I'm going on vacation, one week, two weeks old, you will think the two weeks will never end. <laughs> because we don't, we want the church to come in, but we don't want to do the work. Work is hard. Whatever work you do, whether in the office, whether in the, whichever one, anything that is, even God himself, after working for six days, he needed to rest. Amen? Amen. So we need to move from just praying and hoping, but we need to move to say, Lord, you know what? Let our praying and our hope be complemented by the hard, heavy lifting. That God can bless the works of our hands. Yes. The Bible says, lazy man, Proverbs, does not roast what he has taken in hunting. I was sharing that before. What does it mean? It's not a lazy man who has gone to, to hunt, but he has not taken his primary value and added value to it. That's why we see all these uh, Nollywood stars and Hollywood stars and basketball players. They are multi-millionaires, they are billionaires. It's not what they are paid playing basketball. It's not what they are playing playing rugby today. Now today is a Super Bowl. You know, most churches are going to be afflicted today because many people are going to either go to Las Vegas to watch Super Bowl or they call off work and then many of them have to work. But the point is this. They did not become billionaires by playing basketball and running after the ball. They became billionaires by adding value to the skills and the name they already made. That's why they have lines of, uh, of perfume and, and, and clothes and uh, shoes and everything. They signed the endorsement. That's where the money comes from. A lazy man does not take, does not rose what he has taken hunting. So when we see them, it's because they are now make much, they make so much money from endorsements. By applying their name to it. And they are even begging them. I was hearing about Nike and Michael Jordan. He was refusing to endorse them again. The whole Nike begging Michael Jordan. Am I making sense to you? Yes. So what God does here is not up. And the problem we are having in most of our churches are with our people back home is because the government has failed our people and then people now turn to the churches. And unfortunately, there's no difference between the church and the government. And people are open against hope. Hope is not a strategy. 
Oh, it's not a strategy. The strategy is you walk and take have habits and pray, and now you owe and pray that God will bless the work of your hand. Let the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you want to change who you are becoming, change your habits. If you want to change where you are going, change your habits. If you want to change your life, change your habits. To recognize, we need to understand, identify the habits that are prevalent in our lives so that we can master the habits that matter most. If you want to change your, who you are becoming, change your habits. If you want to change where you are going, change your habits. If you want to change your life, change your habits. I've quoted Albert Einstein before. And what he says is, the significant problem we face cannot be solved at the same level we were at when we created them. The significant problem that we face cannot be solved at the same level of thinking at the same level of perception, at the same level of reality that we were when we created them. If you created a problem at level one, you don't. You need a mentality of level two to solve the problem level one. If you created a problem at level two, you need a level of a mentality of level three to solve the problem of level two. You cannot remain on this. That's why we have this demoralizing cycle because we use the same ideas, the same habit to solve the same problem, and that's why we go about in cycles. And then somebody comes and pray on those ignorance that we have. Because what you do is a result of what you believe. And what you believe is a result of what you know. So in order to change what you do, you have to change what you believe. And to change what you believe, you have to change what you know. What we do is the result of what we believe. And what we believe is the result of what we know. So in order to change what we do, we have to change what we believe. And for us to change what we believe, we have to change well, we know. That's why Jesus said, the Bible said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Good questions. You question yourself. Look at your life. Take an inventory. Good questions will produce new revelation. You begin to see things. How many people are deceiving themselves and the thing they are telling them is the truth. Truth is bitter. Correct truth. There's a Yoruba proverb that when two brothers or two sisters or siblings have gone into the room and they are coming out, they are laughing, they have deceived themselves. Because they have spoken truth to themselves, they will come out with, with very frowning eyes. Truth is bitter. Many of us don't want to, we would rather not know the truth at all. That's why many people don't even do their physical. I would rather not even know. They will, they will avoid their physical. Even when the body is standing there, no, 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 yeah, I better not know. By the time the thing enters their body, they go to the doctor, it's already too late. Yeah. We have truth, as bitter as may be, they are also regenerative, it's restorative, it's redemptive. Good questions will produce new revelation. New revelation must lead to new beliefs. New beliefs will produce new actions. New actions will produce new lifestyles. And new lifestyles will produce new results. Let me repeat that. Good question. Good inventory. We produce new revelation. New revelations must lead to new beliefs. New beliefs will produce new actions. And new actions will produce new lifestyles. And new lifestyles will produce new results. That's why the Bible Paul teaches us in Philippians 4, 8 to 9. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good upon it goes on. The thing which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, what do you say? This do, and the God of peace will be with you. I've given us a new question there. In other words, the thoughts, the things that you think about. Not only do you think about it, it's a do this, action, this you do, put into action, and then the God of peace, then you experience. You cannot experience if you have not thought about it and put it into action. That's why hope is not a strategy. Prayer alone by itself is not a strategy. You got to listen to what the word of God is saying and act upon the words of God, and then you experience the power of God. 
Paul tells us that our thoughts shape our lives. Who you are today is a result of your thoughts in the past. Who you become in the future will reflect what you think about today. I have two more points. So we have a, the, the first one is the power of discipline, mastering the habits that matter most. We all have habits. What habits do you need to let go for new habits that are redemptive, restorative, and regenerative? Number two, passion, perseverance, and resilience as redemptive and restorative habits. We need to imbibe and apply passion, perseverance, and resilience as redemptive and restorative habits. In other words, if we must have habits at all, and all of us do, we are humans, but we need to identify habits that are, that are passionate, that we are passionate about, that will give us the perseverance and resilience. Now, let me break this down for us. There was a book written by uh, Angela uh, Duckworth in 2018. I saw that book. I bought two copies by Amazon and sent to my daughters. The title is Grit, G-R-I-T. The Power of Passion and Perseverance. 2018, Angela Duckworth Grit, G-R-I-T, the power of passion and perseverance. And what the book is saying is, first of all, what is grit, by the way? G-R-I-T. If you Google the definition, it will give you courage and resolve. Strength of character. You stay there, the temerity, you, are, you hold on. That's what it means to have, to have grit, to be the one that has courage and, 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 and resolve and strength of character. You, you stand and establish and stamina. Resilience is the capacity to withstand or to recover quickly from difficulties and toughness. Resilience, the capacity to withstand or to recover quickly from difficulties and toughness. How many people fail at the first attempt? How many people fail even the second attempt? I'm going to give us an example. One of the best presidents we will ever talk about in America is Abraham Lincoln. If you read the life history of Abraham Lincoln, you don't want to be like him at all. I'm going to show us a few things this man went through. And he became resilient. He had the grit. He had the temerity. He had the same power. And he changed the world. The book, Grit, uh, The Power of Passion and Perseverance, shows anyone striving to succeed that the secret to outstanding achievement, listen to this, God's people, the secret to outstanding achievement is not talent. It's, she doesn't say that talent is not good, but if you say, well, I wish I had that talent, I wish I had that ability, becoming successful in life is not about being talented. Talk about how many of the billionaires today are dropouts. We know the story of uh, Bill Gates, the story of Mark Zuzenberg, and many of them like that. They are not the genius in the world. And the genius that we have don't even they have the money and the power and the influence that these people control. So, what this Angela Dogwa is saying is anything, someone, uh, so, uh, in other words, Outstanding achievement is not by talent alone, but a special blend, a salad bowl of passion and persistence, which she calls grit, passion and persistence. Inspiration for non genesis everywhere. Those of us who are not genesis, this is very inspirational. Douglas' ideas about the cultivation of tenacity have clearly changed many lives. I could go on and then. Uh, among this most valuable insight, listen to this. Any effort you make ultimately counts twice toward your goal. Listen to that. Any effort you make ultimately counts what? Not one, twice toward your goal. Somebody said I was stopping in the school, uh, I think it was Kaiser, and I saw a poster board, uh, a poster with uh, Michael Jordan. And what they said is that uh, you miss a hundred percent shots that you never made. Something like that. If you don't make any single shot, you miss one of them. If you make a hundred shots, maybe by chance you 
make one. That one can make the difference. But you say, well, you know, I'm not an angel, I'm not like a donor, and you don't make, you don't even know what you have. Many of us don't know what the capacity that we have, but we are thrown out there. And we have to swim to survive. Greet is a book about what goes through your head when you fall down. And how that not talent or luck, not talent, not luck, not hope, make all the difference. Can you see that now? The thing many of us will be praying for, we can pray. Oh, no, 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 give, uh, just give me luck, luck. No, 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 no. It's not your luck. It's not your talent. It's not your hope. It's just your brute perseverance and passion and God's blessing on that. If I were to ask you to name the three greatest presidents in the United States or this country has ever had, undoubtedly, without doubt, Abraham Lincoln's name will make the list. He was instrumental in abolishing slavery and he led 